Member for Kuyong, is the call. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Can I congratulate my colleague on that excellent speech and very thoughtful presentation about an important issue which should concern everybody in this House, and that is the Dental Benefits Amendment Bill 2012. The Coalition has sought to disallow this gov the government's proposals, not because we don't support further investment in dental health, because we do, not because we don't appreciate the need for reform to the Medicare Chronic Disease Dental Scheme, because we do, and not because we don't appreciate the value of Medicare-funded dental treatment, but because we do. But because this $4.1 billion dental program announced by the Labor Party is A, unfunded, and B, going to leave many patients who, or, uh, who are or would have received treatment under the CDDS left in the cold. Madam Deputy Speaker, the government's new scheme doesn't commence till 2014. 2014 in January for children aged 2 to 17 and 2014 in July for adults. But new patients to the chronic disease, um, chronic disease dental scheme will be unable to access services after the 7th of September this year. And the Medicare chronic disease dental scheme will be closed from the 30th of November this year. This means that adults with dental problems will go without services for nearly 19 months and children for 13 months. This is just unacceptable. Don't take my word for it. I'll read you a release from the Australian Dental Association from its federal president in September this year. It called this policy short-sightedness. It said, and I quote, the mode of closure of the CDDS has given little consideration to the many patients currently receiving treatment. Many patients currently accepted into the CDDS will be unable to complete their course treatment by the closure date of 30th of November 2012. Providing patients with only 12 weeks to complete treatment demonstrates a fundamental lack of understanding about dental care by the Australian government. Madam Deputy Speaker, they're not my words. They're not the words of the coalition leader. They are the words of the federal president of the Australian Dental Association. It goes on to say the ADA, the Australian Dental Association, believes that at the present time, too much attention has been given to achieving budgetary savings rather than focusing on maintaining government-funded dental care before the implementation of the new programs. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is unacceptable. I have been contacted, like many of my fellow colleagues, on this side of the House by constituents who too feel strongly about this issue and are worried about their inability to access sufficient and subsidised dental care. The Shadow Minister for Health, the member for Dixon, spoke eloquently in the parliament on this issue, detailing how he was contacted by one of his constituents, a pensioner on disability support, who was struggling with throat cancer. Because of the radiation treatment this gentleman was receiving, his body cannot produce the saliva to properly open his jaw. This requires specific and intensive fluoride treatment. The cost of major surgery is prohibitive at over $50,000, leaving this person to require regular treatment and dental visits. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, with the closure of the CDDS, this subsidised treatment will not be available. Who knows what this man will do? The Minister for Health, who's now in this chamber, should answer that question instead of talking among herself. She should listen to the Coalition's enlightened concerns about this policy. This case, raised by the member for Dixon, must be one of thousands of individual cases right across this country of people in need who will be denied care simply because this Gillard government has mismanaged the economy to such an extent that they are now desperate to cut essential services in a vain attempt to reach a budget surplus next year, which we know they will not reach. 
because in the last five years they have delivered the biggest budget deficits in the history of the Commonwealth. Madam Deputy Speaker, another major concern for the opposition is that this government is seeking to rush this bill before Parliament, by the way, which will not take impact effect with their new policy until 2014, without providing the schedule of services and fees that will apply. How can we proceed without that full information? The government's plan is to provide a $1,000 cap benefit over two years to eligible children under this new scheme. When it comes to adults, funding will be directed towards state governments with services for adults no longer carrying on via private dentists under Medicare. There is also under the government's proposal more than $200 million for dental infrastructure, also to take effect, not till 2014. Such spending commitments may be all well and good for those who propose them, but if the money is not avail available, this is not the best outcome for the Australian people. Madam Deputy Speaker, the truth is the only reason this government and this health minister wants to abandon the Medicare chronic disease dental scheme is because it was a creation of the Howard government. It was established by the current leader of the opposition, the Honourable Tony Abbott, as part of his successful tenure as health minister. Despite the government's claims of expenditure blowouts, figures released by the Department of Health and Ageing show that the average claim per patient is $1,716, significantly below the allowable $4,250. What is more, 80 per cent of the more than 20 million services given to more than 1 million patients under the CDDS has been provided to concession card holders. These are the people with lower incomes in our community. Madam Deputy Speaker, in conclusion, and the Minister for Health who's now in the chamber should listen to this, we have 650,000 people on public dental waiting lists, 250,000 of whom are children. Clearly more needs to be done, but the government's proposal is not the answer. In a desperate attempt to balance the books, they are shortchanging Australians. Australians who are most in need, Australians with chronic diseases. People young and old in this country will now be unable to access subsidised dental services for months on end, up to 19 months for adults due to the imminent closure of the chronic disease dental scheme. This government must do better. And when we, the coalition, get our chance in government, we will do better. The sooner that happens, the better it is for all Australians.